So here we're going to continue looking at how to graph functions using the idea that we are transforming um, some sort of basic function. Now, last uh, last video, so in the video notes, we looked at some of our common toolkit functions, and we saw how um, you know multiplying the function or multiplying the x value does certain things, right? how adding to the function or adding to the x value does certain things. So we learned all these different types of transformations and kind of applied them you know, just one at a time. So in this video, the goal is to um, do two things. One, as we'll see in this first example, is to learn how to apply these transformation ideas to an arbitrary function, all right? Um, and this is kind of a higher level of understanding because you can't use your calculator to kind of check your work for this. So um, it kind of forces you to really understand the concept. And then the other thing we're going to do is apply multiple transformations all at once. All right, so let's start with this one. So I want us to make two graphs here. Um, and this would be a really good one to pause and try yourself. But I want you to, on the same grid here, try to graph one half kx and k of two x given that the graph already shown is just plain old k of x. So give that a try, see if that makes sense to you, and then we'll come back and look at it together. All right, so uh, let's do, we'll do this in two different colors here. We'll, let's use uh, red for this one, and we'll use green for this one. All right, so let's start with this. So the first thing we have to determine is what type of transformation that one half kx is. So remember that if you are multiplying the function itself by a number, then that is a vertical stretch or shrink. And when you're multiplying it by a number less than one, that means it's a vertical shrink. So we would say this is a vertical shrink By one half. And since it's vertical, right, it's acting on y values. So understand what we're literally going to do is we're going to go to various prominent points on the graph and we're going to move them according to this transformation. So if this basically multiplies all the y values by a half, then I'm just cutting all these in half. So this point goes here, this point goes here. Of course, cutting zero and a half does nothing, so we're still right there. Multiply this by a half, it goes down to two. Multiply this by a half, it goes to negative one. And so this gives us what we want, which is definitely this idea of a vertical shrink. Oops, kind of missed that a little bit, sorry. All right, so that's that first one. Okay, what about the green one here? So notice that we have a two, but it is happening to the x, not the function itself, right? So if your multiplication is on the x, that's affecting horizontally, because x is our horizontal axis, right? So we would say that this is a horizontal, and then remember the horizontal ones are kind of the opposite that you'd expect. So the numbers that are bigger than one actually create a horizontal shrink, and numbers that are smaller than one create a horizontal stretch. And remember the, the way we kind of thought about this in the last video is that things are happening twice as fast. Okay, so the x is kind of telling you when certain y values are occurring. And so if I am doing something to the x, it's saying, well, if I'm multiplying it by 2, I'm saying things should happen twice as fast, right? So the way to think of this is, if I start with this point here, instead of happening at x equals 3, right, it should happen sooner, right, at a half. Okay, so I'm literally dividing it by 2. Instead of, it, instead of this y value taking place at x equals 2, it should take place at x equals 1. It should happen sooner. Okay, of course, 0 
like with the red graph, stays put, right? Divide zero by two, you get zero. And then dividing uh, negative two by two, you get negative one. And dividing negative four by negative or by two, you get negative two. And so you can see that we in fact get this horizontal shrink. Oh, I'm sorry. That was a silly mistake. <laughs> I started looking at the red graph there, so I apologize. Um, let's see here. All right. So this is what I'm trying to make into negative one, and this is what I'm trying to make into negative two. And so we've taken that original black graph, and we have shrunk it horizontally, right? You can imagine kind of taking the sides of that and squeezing it down. And then in the first one, we're taking the uh, top and bottom and uh, squeezing it vertically. All right, so this is just us applying what we learned um, in our previous video to this idea of an arbitrary function. Okay. But now what we want to do is see if we can apply multiple um, multiple transformations at once. Um, now there's kind of two approaches to this and they're consistent with each other but you just kind of think about them a little differently. But the important thing here is you see that there is arithmetic being done to our function, right? And in, in example two, clearly y equals the absolute value of x is kind of our base function. So we have multiplication by 2 and subtraction by 3. So if you want to think about this as applying the transformations in a particular order, what you want to do is always apply shrinks, excuse me, shrinks, stretches, and flips first, and then shifts second. And the reason for that is because in the order of operations, we know that multiplication, division, um, come before addition and subtraction. Okay, so we always do it in that order, and that's what this important note's all about. Okay, so I want to show you kind of. Uh, two different ways you can approach this same problem. Okay, so one way is to start off by graphing the toolkit function. At least get a couple different points down. So we start off by graphing the toolkit function so that we have a nice picture of that. And then, just like on the last uh, example, go point by point and put those points where they're supposed to go. And so what I can do here is say I am going to do this a step at a time and I'm going to, I'm going to start with this point, the one at the, at the bottom of the V here. So first of all we got to identify what these are, right? This is happening to the absolute value function, so that means it's a vertical stretch. And then this would be, the subtraction is happening to the function, and so this would be a vertical shift. And it's going down three. All right, so those are our two transformations. So what I can do is take each of these points that I see and do both of those things to them. So I need to multiply my y value by 2 and then subtract 3 from that y value because they're both vertical, right? So down 1, 2, 3. All right, and I just do that to each one. First I multiply by 2, then I go down 1, 2, 3. Multiply by 2 go down one, two, three. And do that over here as well. Multiply by two, and then go down one, two, three. Multiply by two, and go down one, two, three. Until we get a pretty solid picture of this thing. Okay, so there's our, there's our function, okay? Now, there is another way to kind of think of this and so let me show you that as well. And you can kind of decide what 
really works best for you. So, um, and I'll just, uh, I'll just, I don't know, do this in, in green, I guess. Okay. So the other way to approach this is to say, this bottom uh, point here is kind of the most important part of that absolute value graph, right? So one way to approach it is to first say, where does this most important point go? Okay. Um, and, or uh, I guess another way of saying it is the point that's at uh, the origin, right? The point that's at the origin, let's figure out where that goes and then build everything else off of there. Okay. So I know that the multiplication by two does not affect the point at the origin, but shifting down three does. So my first step is just to take this and stick it down here instead. And then from there, I've kind of taken care of the vertical shift downward for the whole graph if I think of this as my new starting point. And so now I just have to ask myself like, okay, what would absolute value normally do from this starting point? Well, normally it goes over one, up one. But if I have a vertical stretch, what should I do? Well, I should go over one, up two. Normally it goes over two, up two. So what should I do? I should go over two, up four, right? So you see, of course, we get the exact same graph, right? But instead, we're kind of saying, let's start with our origin point, kind of make a new origin, and then go to the appropriate places based upon our stretch or shrink from there. So whichever way, which of those ways makes sense to you um, is, is, is totally fine. The, the one thing you have to avoid is saying, I'm just going to shift all the points down three and then multiply them by two because that, that's in the wrong order, right? What I just did is different than that. I said, okay, where's my new starting point? And then from that starting point, if I apply stretches and shrinks correctly, then I'm going to have everything in the right place. All right, let's do another example here. So we have the square root in this one as kind of our base function, right? Y equals the square root of X. So let's go ahead and just sketch that as kind of a reference point. So we know it goes over one, up one. The next important point is when you go over four because the square root of four is two. And then when you go over nine, you go up three because the square root of nine is three. And so those are kind of the four points, remember, that we want to pay, pay attention to when it comes to the square root graph. All right. So let me fix that a little bit. All right. So to apply the idea of just kind of going through and applying each transformation in the proper order, let's start with our origin here. So we've got what? A vertical stretch, right? I know it's a vertical stretch because it is outside the function itself. Now this negative is inside of the argument of our function. It's with the x, so this is a horizontal flip. And then our minus 3 here is a shift down, right? It's a vertical shift because it's again happening outside of that square root. So let's go through each of these points here. So I know that the vertical stretch does not affect this because it's at y equals zero. Two times zero is zero. The horizontal flip also doesn't matter because it's at x equals zero, right? The negative of zero is zero. And so the only thing that affects it is the minus three. So I'm going to go down one, two, three. And so that point goes there. All right, but it's when we get to these three points that things get more interesting. So I am going to stretch by two in the y. And then when I horizontally flip, that makes it jump over to here, right? So instead of being at x equals 1, it's now at x equals negative 1. And then shifting down 3 takes me down 1, 2, 3. All right. This one here, it's at y equals 2. The vertical shift brings it up 
to four. The horizontal flip takes it from four all the way over to negative four. And then the shift downward three, one, two, three, gives me the point right there. And then, same thing, uh, multiply by two, takes me up to six. Horizontal flip goes from nine all the way over to negative nine, and then down three, one, two, three. And so there is our transformed square root function. Now, one thing that you can definitely do is apply that other method that I showed. And remember that is take the origin and put it where it's supposed to be first, right? So the flip and the stretch doesn't have any bearing on it, but shifting down, three puts it there. And then from there you can say to yourself, okay, what would normally happen with uh, coming off of that origin? And then how does what transformations occurred affect that? So normally I would go right one, up one. But instead uh, of that, because I have a horizontal flip, I need to go actually left one. And because of the vertical stretch, I need to go up two instead of up one. So that puts a point there. Normally I would go over four, up two. So now I need to go left four, up twice as much, so four. Normally I'd go right nine, up three. So now I need to go left nine, up six. Right, so you can get that that same exact graph. You just kind of think about it slightly differently. Again, in, in their essence, they're equivalent to one another. Those two methods, um, but it's just kind of a different way of thinking it through. All right, so in example four here, I really want you to try this on your own. Just make a guess. It doesn't you don't need to take very long doing it, but I want you to guess based on what transformations you think you see here. Um, what you think this graph should look like and just and just sketch it on your paper real quick. Alright, so now that you've paused and sketched it on your paper, let's take a look at the graph of this thing. So on my y equals menu, I'm gonna put three x minus six, all squared. All right, and we will just go to a standard window to look at this. All right, so I'm looking at this and it's a parabola, not surprisingly, because we, we saw that it was squared. Um, but what may be surprising to you is that it looks like it's been shifted over two. And that might be kind of perplexing because uh, it's, it's showing shifted over 2, and yet I see this minus 6 here. Now you very well may have identified that, you know, this is a horizontal shrink, and this would be a horizontal shift because it's all happening to the t value, or it's all happening inside of the, the function, inside the argument. Okay? But I think it would be very reasonable for you to assume that the shift is to the right six places, right? And just as a reminder, remember, with horizontal shifts, it's always opposite, right? So minus means right, plus means left. Again, because things are happening later, so I have to move that way. But they're telling us that this right here is where the bottom of that parabola is. So it looks like a shift of two. Now you might even see how a two can be created from this. If you pull a three out of the inside there, then you can see a two. So what we have is a horizontal, horizontal shrink by three and a horizontal shift to the right two places. So what this does is it gives us this important principle we got to remember. If you ever have um, 
a horizontal flip or stretch or shrink combined with a horizontal shift, the argument must be factored. Okay, it says factor the argument in order to see the transformations. Otherwise, your your eyes will kind of deceive you. Okay. Now, uh, just to kind of finish this out, though, we know that a parabola, or you know, just basic y equals x squared graph, right, looks like this. Okay, so given the fact we've determined, yes, it's a shift over two, you know, normally I would go right one up one. So, um, you know, instead though, it's a horizontal shrink by three, so I'd only have to go over one third up one. Okay, that might be kind of hard to draw. So what I'm gonna do instead is just look at, okay, normally I, when I go over three, I go up nine. So now I'm gonna go up nine just after going over one. Right, And then when I go left 3, I go up 9. So now when I go left just 1, I go up 9. Okay, And so that's where we're getting that really skinny parabola that you saw on the graphing calculator. Okay, Basically, the same y values are happening three times as quickly, essentially, um, in the x. All right, but remember this principle, right? Remember this principle. You've got to have the argument factored in order to see the true shift. Um, this is going to be really important in your next class, by the way. Um, but also, you'll encounter it here as well. All right, so here's a good opportunity for you to pause and then try to apply the, this these ideas of a multiple transformations. Um, to that same graph we started this video with. All right, so um, so give this a try yourself first, definitely. Um, these two different graphs, and when you unpause, we'll we'll come back and um, look at it together. All right, so let's let's take these one at a time. So this one quarter. That's happening outside the function itself. So this is a uh, vertical shrink, right? With vertical, it's exactly like you would expect. Numbers smaller than one shrink it vertically. And a horizontal, because it's happening to the x, horizontal shift and remember, horizontal shifts are always kind of the opposite you might intuitively expect. So a minus 2 means right 2. So I can apply that to each of these individual points that we talked about in our first example. So let's see. We are multiplying the y values by one quarter and shifting the x values to the right too. So I just simply say, all right, one quarter times four is one, and then right two. And I do want to use a different color there. There we go, right two. One fourth times four is one, right two. One fourth times a y value of zero is still zero, but then I'm still gonna go right two. Um, one quarter times four is one, and then right two, and then one quarter times negative two is going to be negative a half, and then right two. So you can definitely see kind of what you would expect, right? We've smashed it vertically, and then we've shoved it to the right a little bit. All right, and then this one, what do we have? Well, that negative symbol is with the x, so that is a horizontal flip. And then we have, this is a vertical shift, right? Because it's happening outside the function. So we have a vertical shift down one. All right, so I take each of these points 
if it's a horizontal flip, instead of this y value occurring at negative four, it should happen at the opposite, which would be four. So it moves all the way over there and then it shifts down one. So there's that point. Instead of happening at negative two to flip it in the x, it should go over to two and then down one. Okay, zero doesn't go anywhere when you apply the horizontal flip. All right, but down one, it goes right here. Horizontal flip puts this at negative two. Down one puts it here. Horizontal flip puts this at negative three. Down one puts it here. And so when I connect the dots, you should be able to see the idea of flipping it over the y-axis and shifting it down a little bit. All right, last one here is kind of a toughie. Um, I'm asking us to apply a whole ton of transformations to this thing. So this is another one I'd like you to pause it, do your best. Um, and this is one of those where, hey, if you get this right on the first try, you really understand this. If you're still struggling a little bit with this one, it's okay, you just, you're just you just gonna need to practice a little bit more. All right, so uh, give it a pause and then we'll be back in a second to talk through it. All right, so you know one thing that may not be a terrible idea, I've got this one on two separate graphs, but it, it may even help you just to go ahead and sketch what's already there, right? I think in that last problem, we kind of find it helpful to have the points that we're trying to move around a little bit, um, you know, on the same graph where we're doing the sketching. So there would be nothing wrong if you wanted to just go ahead and sketch it there. All right, but now we got to go identify all these different um, transformations. So this two, right? It's happening outside the function and it's multiplication. The number is bigger than one. So this is a vertical stretch by two. Okay. This one half, okay, that's happening to the X, right? So remember that it's the opposite with horizontal, right? So numbers that are smaller than one cause stretches and numbers bigger than one cause shrink. So this is a horizontal, a horizontal stretch. All right. Um, and then what do we have? We've got these um, other, these shifts here. So this one's happening in with the X. And remember, it's always kind of the opposite of what you would expect. So this is a horizontal shift right two and this is a vertical shift and with vertical shifts it's exactly how you would intuitively think about it when you see minus it's going down down one so just always keep that principle in mind where vertical shifts and stretches are kind of doing exactly what you'd expect them to do horizontals are kind of doing the opposite of what you might expect them to do all right so with all that, we can apply this to each point. We're just gonna remember we're applying the stretches uh, slash shrink slash flips first and then the shifts last. All right, so here we go. Uh, it doesn't matter between, we know we gotta do these two stretches first, but it doesn't matter which one's which because one's on the Y and one's on the X, right? So st let's start with the Y. Vertical stretch by two goes from two to four. All right, horizontal stretch goes from four to eight, right? So I'm multiplying uh, my x's by two, or you can think of it as dividing by a half, right? Because with horizontal, we divide by the number that's here. And then we have a shift to the right by two, so one, two and then a shift down one. So this point ends up right here. All right. 
Let's do the same thing here. So a vertical stretch by two goes from a y value of four to a y value of eight. A horizontal stretch goes from negative two to negative four, so doubling that x value. The horizontal shift to the right two goes back one, two to the right. And then the vertical shift down one takes me down here to one, or down, down here one to seven. All right, let's go with this one here. Stretch the y value by two to, from negative three to negative six. Uh, stretch horizontally takes you to uh, two. Then shifting to the right horizontally takes me two more this way. And then shifting down one puts me there. All right, and you can kind of see this thing taking shape now. One last one. Stretch by a factor of two doubles the y value. Double the x value out to six. Shift it to the right two, and then shift it down one. And so if you got this picture, then you really understand this quite well. And like I said, if you don't, it's not time to panic, just time to practice a little more, that's all. You know, and to put this in the language of, uh, you know, our, the rubrics and everything, right? You're doing this, you're at expert level, okay? Um, if you can kind of do everything else, but you struggled with this one, you're definitely at least at proficient level. So you're still, you're still doing fine, but definitely uh, worth practicing up some more.